Um, I could not be more pleased uh, to introduce to you Dr. Dennis Charney, the Ann and Joel Aaron Kranz Dean, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai and President for Academic Affairs, Mount Sinai Health System, my boss, my, win my mentor. Welcome back, Dr. Charney. Thank you, you just made it harder to get through the speech. <laughs> but I'll do my best. Class of 2020, family and friends, faculty and members of the Mount Sinai Boards of Trustees, welcome to the 2016 White Coat Ceremony. The donning of the universally recognized and globally respected White Coat has been an enduring symbol of the medical profession's commitment to patient care and biomedical research for over 100 years. Today, I talk to you as Dean, and also as, as someone who has recently experienced a great personal trauma. On the, on the morning of August 29th, 2016, just before 7 a.m., I walked into Lang's little store in Chappaqua, New York. Large large iced coffee, bagel, light on the butter. I'm a regular. <laughs> they know my order. I paid and left. A few steps out the door, I heard what sounded like a bomb. The noise echoed in the sweet morning air. I looked at my shoulder. Blood was pouring out. I looked across the street. A man approximately 20 feet away was holding a shotgun. Did I know him? I'd been shot, I yelled. I ran back into Lang's, repeating this phrase, and according to some witnesses, used an expletive or two. <laughs> I might actually deny that. <laughs> a stranger guided me to sit on a staircase out of sight of my assailant. He told me I would be OK. How does he know? Is he a doctor? <laughs> then I thought, you know, wait a minute, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I performed a back of the envelope calculation. Alert, oriented, damage concentrated to my arm and shoulder. I don't think I'm gonna die. A Langs employee and friend of my family, George, remained calm. He called for help. Patrolman Tolliver arrived shortly after, provi providing compression to my wounds. Other policemen, especially Officer Frank Hirotko, at great personal danger, went to apprehend the assailant. Later in the emergency room at Westchester Medical Center, it was found that I had numerous shotgun pellets lodged in the muscles and uh, bones of my shoulder. In addition, one pellet had punctured my lung, another had broken a rib, and a few were sitting on the surface of my liver. Luckily, I was transferred to Mount Sinai Hospital, <laughs> where I recovered over the course of a few days before going home to recuperate. This ceremony is the first time I've returned uh, since the attack. During this time, I've reflected on concerns, both great and small, the bonds we form, the choices we make, the paths we choose. Today, our paths cross. For a few moments, please allow me to share with you the perspective of the medical profession that I have gained through the recent attempt on my life. Friends, family members, Today we gather to contemplate the role that these 140 men and women will from this day forth be asked to play in society, the doctor. Students, I look out at your faces and cannot help but wonder 
What winds blew you down this path to this place, to this room, to this moment? What does being a doctor mean in your imagination? Let me be the first to tell you, in the words of the immortal Bruce Springsteen, everybody knows I have to have a Springsteen quote in my talk. To be a doctor will require you to be, quote, tougher than the rest. Being a doctor consists of people coming to you in the crisis of their lives and asking you for the answers. Being a doctor means living up to the immense expectations of society. At any hour, in any place, it is assumed if tragedy strikes, there will be a doctor on hand to handle the case with grace and confidence. Both physically and mentally, doctors are expected to stitch up the victims of adversity. When epidemics emerge, when the unspeakable occurs, it often calls upon physicians to be first responders, to explain how and why, even when it may be inexplicable. Being a doctor, means making sacrifices. When hard times fall upon your own life, family members and loved ones will look upon you as a pillar of strength. They will gauge how concerned they should be based on the look in your face. In these moments, it may not, it may not be clear who to turn to for help with your own private suffering. Being a doctor means coping with loss and disappointment on a daily basis. Many of your patients will not get better. Some will die. Too few will be cured. Sometimes we lose one of our own. Yes, being a doctor is tough. Yet, let me also be among the first to tell you it can be incredibly rewarding. In fact, the same elements that make it difficult are often what makes it worthwhile. Yes, two, today two few, uh, patients will be cured. Sometimes, though, you will save a patient's life. And some of you will make a discovery that will help many, if not millions, of patients live. Granted, we all come into medicine expecting such moments to be more frequent than they are. But these moments do exist. They are not a myth. Yes, we will lose some of our patients. But we must learn from every death and constantly strive together to make discoveries of better treatments. Yes, we are often called upon to show strength during professional and personal tragedy. This is both a burden and a privilege to show strength to show courage, to inspire those around us by demonstrating grace under duress. This is a gift unlike any in the world. As a doctor, we are constantly exposed to adversity, conditions one has the privilege to bear witness of a heroic acts. When I was attacked, police officer Davenport arrived at the scene soon after. He then came with me to the emergency room, though he was off duty, and waited in a chair at the entrance guarding the door to my room until I was transferred to Mount Sinai. As we were leaving, my son thanked police officer Davenport, who responded by giving him a firm handshake and saying, I only wish I was in front of him when the shot rang out. Police officer Davenport was a stranger. Not anymore. You will have the privilege to bear witness to the miracle work of nurses commanding the sick room with purposeful, concise movements, highly attuned to the clinical subtleties 
that no textbook ever taught. And of course, you will bear witness to the incredible commitment of your physician colleagues to their patients, rounding when they arrive at 5 a.m. and again when they leave at 10 p.m., and spending countless moments in between checking, rechecking, triple checking, lab values, surgical plans, vital signs, preparing for the slightest sign of deterioration and hoping for signs of improvement. Adversity reveals the character of an individual, an institution like Mount Sinai, a community, and even a nation. In my case, I bore witness to heroic actions of a community of individuals that came together as part of our medical school and our hospital. I owe enormous gratitude to Michael Marin, Chair of Surgery, who supervised my care, Raja Flores, Chair of Thoracic Surgery, Robert Lukstein, Director of Interventional Radiology, the Surgical Care Unit Physicians, Rupa Kolosef and Adele Vasily Marcus, the nurses, especially Rosanna Del Judas, and the housekeepers who cared about our environment. I can never express enough thanks to the Mount Sinai security team, led by Tim Bergender and Annabelle Nuevas and the Newcastle Police Department for immediately making my personal safety and the safety of my family a top priority. Please acknowledge these individuals. Class of 2020, these are going to be your mentors. They're terrific. Based on my experience as a medical student, doctor, researcher, dean, and now a trauma victim, these are things that I know. I know these next four years of your life will be trying. It will be a challenge to find a balance between achieving success in school and fulfillment in other aspects of life there will not be one right way to do it. I know, once you have been in a room, looking into the eyes of a suffering person who wants you to have the answers do not exist, or if they do exist, and you have those answers and save their life, you can never go back to who you were. There is no going back to who you were before you donned this coat. If you were an artist before, you will still be an artist, but not the same one. If you were an athlete, you will still be an athlete, but not the same one. It will mean something different for everybody, but it will mean something. It is not a neutral decision putting on this white coat. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Helen Keller. I know you only get one life, and in anything you do, what matters most is that you have integrity and stand for what you believe in. As a doctor, this isn't just a choice. It's a commitment we make to our patients when we wear this white coat. It does not symbolize being inducted into an elite community of doctors, but instead, the induction into a community of everyday people who vow to live by a code of honor. And finally, I know Bad stuff does happen. A bad thing happened to me. You will face tough times, but if you stay the course, nose to the grindstone, eyes to the stars, ultimately you will emerge further down the road tougher than the rest. For as Ernest Hemingway said, the world breaks everyone, 
and half the wood. Many are strongest in the broken places. Thank you very much.